Ma forse no, ci possiamo mettere qua dietro tranquilli. O là, o là. Eh, eh appunto. Dipende da dove stanno, eh. Io ho l'impressione che. Eh, io credo che in ogni caso ci conviene questi. Questi sono tre stranieri. No, delle semifinali, chi Eh, questi tre. I due che rimangono di questi. Quindi mantengono le piste, mantengono questa vista. Sì. sul sito per rischio che ci vada una cosa in più poi lo sai che alla fine Alessandro Di Berti dà fastidio sì. eh sì perché quello è il lavoro suo se lo facciamo insieme un paio di mani You are very welcome back to the wonderful Red and White Bowling Centre here in Asti in North West Italy where we're now into the next round of the finals for the Championship of 2011 at the Brunswick Asti Challenge. 
I hope you paid great attention to the commercial for their new volleyball, their friends that went out. That was a world exclusive presentation of the commercial, and we'll be marking you on points at the end of the show to see how well you paid attention. Now, we're on lanes three and four, three survivors from the first round. Ronnie Russell, Stuart Williams, and Paul Moore, two English against the Colonial. Ronnie Russell has been bowling some fabulous scores, but he's only had one strike so far in this game. We're in the fourth frame. Stuart Williams started off with a double and followed that with a nice spare. Paul Moore started with a strike, went to nice spare, and then hit a double score. He's well in line, but who is going to drop out? Because one game, there are three bowlers, the lowest score will drop out. Then the one with the highest score will play the one with the second highest score. So number one against number two. A game of one game of fair, and that's the same that's going on over nine and ten. So we'll switch to seven and eight for the final, where the winners of that round will play for the title of Master Champion of the 2011 Italia Challenge, the first of a long series of tournaments that is going to attract a huge entry. Bill Hartofelis, the Brunswick distributor for Greece and many other countries, is sitting alongside me. Bill, you know, you, you've been watching the Brunswick Euro Challenge for seven or eight years and it's been going. How do you think the Brunswick Italia Challenge is going to measure up to that? Well, uh, the atmosphere is wonderful. It's the first tournament, uh, it's the first Italian challenge. And I'm pretty confident that uh, in the past years, it could be one of the best tournaments in Europe. I have a feeling that because of the location, that could be as good or even better than the Euro Challenge. Uh, the people have what it takes to make a good tournament. And people are not here only for the bowling. Uh, they enjoy themselves. They're having fun. And to today's uh, economic crisis, uh, it's very affordable to, to be here. So, just you see a lot. Well, it was surprising to me that uh, the tournament is not a member of the European Bowling Tour until next year. But we had over 250 entries for a tournament that is not established. And that's incredible to me. Yes, you're totally right, and uh, these people are professional down here, and we wanted to do and see what, is, uh, what could be corrected, so next year when we join the ABT, uh, everything will be perfect, and uh, we'll do a lot of good things. Uh, if this is the beginning, uh, you can imagine that next year everything will be a hard percent. The Red and Black Bowling Center is a 24-lane Brunswick installation. That is, I, I've got to say it, it is perfect, absolutely perfect for a tournament. And also, it is the headquarters of Sideline, who are the Brunswick distributors for Italy, the surrounding countries, and some countries in North Africa. So really, the expertise is absolutely tremendous. Yes, you're right, it's, uh, you're totally right. Uh, I'm uh, 35 years in Brunswick, I have done a lot of installation myself, but this is really impressive. And this is what I like, that uh, Brunswick is helping out all these tournaments, they're helping us out by sending all the professionals from the stage. Uh, the equipment that is used is uh, new technology and uh, you can see wonderful scores. What I like is that even bowlers, not everybody can pass to the next round, but they're happy with themselves, they enjoy their bowling. This is what it is today. I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to butter up to a wonderful proprietor with Ricardo Bianti, but the ambience when you walk in the front door is absolutely remarkable. Right, right. It's, it's, everybody was amazed at the bowling center. It was really so smart. And you know what the difference is in reality, kid? Uh, this proprietor, uh, Ricardo Bianti, he's not, I mean, he doesn't do it only for the money. That's important. He loves bowling. That's his life. He grew up in the bowling center. So, like, he, he does things first for himself. If 
he feels good for what he's doing, then it's definitely that the customers will feel good, the bowlers will feel good. And when a proprietor has a passion for bowling, that really shows up. So let's catch up with the scores now. Thank you, Bill, for those remarks. You're welcome, Kit. Uh, Ronnie Russell has only had three strikes so far in seven frames, but he is working on a double with 95 in the fifth frame. Stuart Williams has also only had three strikes, but he had two to start with, three nine spares, and then a strike. Paul Moore, he's had five strikes. Started with a strike, nine spares, strike, 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 nine spares, strike. So he's doing pretty well. He's pretty solid in the pocket. I'm not sure which pins he left, whether it was seven pins that he left in the second and the six strikes. But he's got the mind of the mains. He likes bowling on this oil. There was only uh, one game, uh, two games, because there were two on a pair in the first round. Ronnie Russell strokes in another one, so he is 125 in the sixth frame, so he's coming back five over par. How's things with you, Dominic? Nice. A man of many words. It's, uh, You're trying to tease me, aren't you? Yeah, I was. It's, uh, it's looking like it's all about Ronnie Russell and Stu Bunny at the moment. To start striking, and it looked like Ronnie was ready to start striking, and he certainly has not been since then. So, the match seems to be between the two EBA pros because Paul seems to be just going about his thing. It looks like he's going to be the one that's going to win this game, and it's going to come down to Stu and Ronnie Russell. But that's three players that any one of them. He left the green church, so there's four, six, seven, nine, ten, and they, the pins fell over one by one. Who pulled the string? The crowd went nuts then, and uh, that could be the strike that gives you the confidence to carry on. Four strikes in a row for Chris Shadow <coughs> over on nine and ten, following three nine spares, 118 in the fifth. So 18 over. Thomas Gross 127 and 6, so it's only 7 over. He's working on 3 9 spares on the truck after starting with a double 9 spare and strike. The sole Italian remaining in the tournament, uh, Enzo Zucanelli, started with a strike, 9 spare strike, 2 9 spares and 2 strikes. 99 in the fifth, so just under. Paul Moore didn't get the action on the pins that Stuart Williams had. Stuart Williams drained that pin deck dry of pin action with his last shot. No, I couldn't believe it. Oh, I hope you saw it on the, on the uh, picture. It was incredible. Stuart with a 12 pin needle with Ronnie. Ronnie comes to a must-try position. Well, this will be Stuart Williams. Yeah, it's looking a good one. Oh, oh, oh how did he trip us into me? Ronnie knows it's between him and him and Paul threw a, threw a loose shot in that last one, and the other two striking so much. Uh, Paul Moore could actually go out now. Any one of them could go out. Right, he's left the 3 9 sleep. It was just the way through the ball down, actually, BT. He knew as soon as it had left his hand, and it was one of the worst shots he's thrown today. Picked up the spare. It's given uh, Stu and Ronnie a chance to catch him up. 187 in the eighth for Paul. With all the strikes running we'll off uh, Ronnie and Stu will soon be catching him up. So any one of these three goals. Well, law of average is going to even itself out. 7 10 split or something. Oh, that's a bad shot from Stu. Only 10 yeah. 7 with that ball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Leaves a 3 4 5. That could be the shot that takes Stu off the tournament. We don't want Stu to go out of the tournament. In fact, we don't want anybody to go out of the tournament, really. But it's got to come down to two. I think looking back now, that's going to be the shot that does it. Because Ronnie Russell is going to strike in this next shot. Stu picks up the spare. That lay. That lay. He's never going to be happy, which is about 10 years.
has to strike out for a 215 to stay in the tournament and he gets the first one. So he needs another strike and six pins to beat and so Sufinelli, the remaining Italian. Everybody finished except Thomas Gross. Taking his time, drying his hand, working on a strike, 185 in the ninth frame. It's looking pretty good from here, and he strikes. So he will knock out Enzo Zucchinelli and he will play Chris Rochetta over one game to get into the next round. 
just get confirmation. One more strike for 215. And there it is. So 215 for Thomas Gross, 229 for Chris Rochetta, and Enzo Zucanelli will depart from the scene with a 210. And again, certainly can leave with his hard pair head held high. He's played very well this weekend. Was a surprise package in the finals. But he's bowled well and he deserves all credit. So once again, Chris Olshetter will play Thomas Gross for a place in the final. And over on three and four, that have just finished, Ronnie Russell will play Stuart Williams. Oh, I'm sorry, will play Paul Moore. Another mistake, another black mark. Yeah, Paul Moore beat Stuart Williams by just four points. Left-handed versus right-handed. So we have just the one left-hander left in the last round.